My name is Takeshi Yasui in Tokushima University, Japan. Today, so I will present uh, uh, dual wavelength low phase noise optical carrier for uh, terahertz optical carrier conversion with uh, EO electro optic polymer modulator. Go to background. So, uh, 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 the terahertz wave has attracted attention for the carrier wave in the next generation mobile wireless communication, namely 6G. However, uh, there are still two technical challenges for 6G. The first challenge is the technical limitation of wireless electronics. Up to 5G, the wireless electronics have been widely used. However, in the next 6G, the uh, wireless electronics, such as wireless electronics, may face a upper limit of frequency in electronics, such as uh, low signal quality and the signal increased signal loss. Therefore, there is a need for paradigm shift beyond the upper frequency limit of wireless electronics. The second challenge is a technical gap between optical and wireless communications. The present ICT is achieved by combination of optical communications based on the photonics and the wireless communications based on the electronics. In this case, at the connecting point between the optical to wireless communications, signal conversion between optical and the electric region is required. So such a signal conversion causes some time delay. Until five, five delay, such a time delay can is negligible. However, uh, the next six C it requires ultra low latency in the wireless communications. So all seamless connection between optical and the wireless communications is strongly required. So these two technical challenge arise from use of electronics in wireless uh, communications. So if so, we can achieve the uh, 6G by use of photonics in place of electronics, that this problem will be overcome. So we define the 6G boosted by photonics as a photonic 6G. Uh, key of 6G is of course the terahertz detectors or a receiver. The conventional terahertz detector such as a short key barrier diode or subharmonics mixer uh, uh, based on the electronics. Unfortunately, so they have a complicated, they are complicated, fragile, and expensive for the widely, wider use of wireless communications. So if the uh, terahertz wi wireless carrier uh, can be converted into the optical carrier by use of photonics, photonic terahertz detection can be uh, achieved enabling the seamless connection from wireless communication to optical communications. Also, existing optical communication platform can be used. The uh, uh, first key of uh, one key of the first key of the photonic test detection is a micro resonator optical comb or micro comb. So this shows a, a temp temporary evolution of OFC technology. So the first generation is a Titan Sapphire cone with a bulky, complicated, and expensive setup. The second generation is a fiber cone with a middle sides, enabling a, a tanky operation. The third generation is a micro cone. The a micro comb, key of micro comb is a micro ring cavity made of the optical waveguides such as a silicon nitride. So when the CW laser right, it's instant to uh, the micro ring resonator, the stable soliton comb can be generated. So in this way, so such a, a micro comb benefit from mass production possible with semiconductor process, small cost effective, simple aspect and the high compatibility with the silicon electronics and the silicon photonics. Therefore, the micro comb can give the versatility to OFC, which is lacking in the previous OFC. Furthermore, it, since the uh, 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 cavity size of micro comb is largely reduced down to the micrometer order, like here, the so FREP can be largely increased up to the 60 wireless carrier frequency around the several hundred gigahertz. The second key 
of photonic direct detection is an electro optic polymer modulator, namely EOP modulator. Compare with the EO crystal used in the previous study, the EOP has a high electro optic coefficient, high frequency response, and a low loss in terrace range. Roa shows a, a schematic drawing of our EOP modulator, uh, including our EOP waveguide and the gold patch antenna. So the optical carrier is coupled into the EOP polymer waveguide like here, and then the optical carrier propagates the EOP waveguide like here. Right shows the cross section of this EOP mod modulator. So the uh, optical waveguide is sandwiches between the pair of patch antenna like here. So when the CW wave is instant into the antenna, the uh, electric field is generated across uh, uh, EOP, EOP waveguide like here. So this results in the phase modulation uh, of optical carrier uh, by terahertz wave. In other words, a, a modulation sideband appears at the frequency of terahertz wave away from the optical carrier. Next slide shows the principle of operation for or conversion. Carrier com conversion from terahertz carrier to optical carrier. We here use a uh, uh, phase locked dual wavelength near infrared light as optical carrier. It is important to note that uh, uh, in this paper, we use uh, electro optic modulator OFC prior to use of microcom because uh, present EOP modulator has high sensitivity around 100 gigahertz. So to generate the phase rock to dual wavelengths near infrared rays, right, with uh, a high optical signal to noise ratio. Uh, we e apply the injection rocking technique for the CW laser, right? Uh, based on the EO, EOM OFC, based on the e two extracted OFC mode uh, from the EOM OFC. And then the uh, resulting dual wavelengths near infrared to right, so new one carrier and the new two carrier are propagated in fiber, optical fiber. New one carrier passes through the EOP modulator irradiated by terahertz wave. And this result in the generation of sideband, modulation sideband at the F terahertz away from the new one carrier like here. And the new two carrier is unmodulated. When the a frequency spacing between new one carrier and the new two carrier, uh, so MF rep is close to the F terahertz, so the uh, new two new one sideband appears close to new two carrier like here. So then, so we extract the uh, band pass filter. Uh, we extract them by band pass filter like here. And then, so the optical heterodyne enhanced the weak new and sideband to obtain the high, high signal to noise ratio in RF baseband signal. And then finally, so the, this optical bit signal is detected by photodetector as a baseband signal in RF region. Next shows the experimental setup. So we here use a EOM OFC with f rep of 10 gigahertz and the new C center wavelength of 1.55 micrometer. And then so we extract the two OFC mode with a frequency spacing of 100 gigahertz as a EOM OFC M1 and M2. And so and then they are, are used for the injection rocking uh, of the a pair of DFB laser, hyper DFB laser, like here. And then so new one carrier, the new two carrier are respectively generated. A uh, new one carrier passes through the EOP modulator irradiated by the terahertz wave. The terahertz wave is generated by a combination of microwave synthesizer and frequency multiplier chain. The resulting terahertz wave has a frequency of 101 gigahertz and uh, uh, average power of 2.5 milliwatt. The, uh, uh, 
And then, so the new one carrier and the new one sideband uh, are combined with the new two carrier, like here. And then, so the uh, new two carrier and the new one uh, sideband. Here, the, here the uh, frequency separate, optical frequency separation between new one carrier and the new two carrier uh, is 100 gigahertz, and the new terahertz wave is uh, 100 gigahertz. So, in this case, the new one side sideband appears at the one gigahertz away from new to carrier like here. And then they are uh, extracted uh, by bandpass filter and detected by photodiode. The resulting RF bit signal is measured by the RF spectrum analyzer. We first evaluated the uh, injection working of DFB laser to EOM OFC COM mode. So this shows optical spectra of the injection rocking DFB1 for slave laser and the EOM OFC M1 for master laser. So the slave and the master has a, a completely same wavelengths indicate the successful uh, uh, injection rocking. So that shows a, a magnified spectra of these two signal. So the optical signal to noise ratio of the injection rocking DFB1 was achieved to uh, 70 decibel, so which is uh, 20 beta by 20 decibel or without the injection rocking. In this way, the amplification and phase noise transfer of EOM OFC M1 was achieved while eliminating the residual unwanted EOM OFC mode and AAC background. We next observe the new one carrier and its modulation sideband in injection rocking DFB1. So this graph compares the uh, optical spectra with and without the irradiation of terahertz wave. Without the irradiation, only the new one carrier can be observed. However, so with the irradiation of terahertz wave, modulation sideband appear at the both side of new one carrier and the frequency separation between them is exactly equal to F terahertz of 100 to 1 gigahertz. The carrier sideband ratio between new one carrier and the new one sideband was achieved to 38 decibel, whereas the optical signal to noise ratio of new one sideband was 35 decibel. Finally, we observed the RF spectra of optical bit signal between new one sideband and the new two carrier. So this is, so in this, since uh, uh, MF rep of, from the MF rep of 100 gigahertz and F terahertz of 100 to 1 gigahertz, the optical bit signal appear at the 1 gigahertz, exactly like here. And the signal to noise ratio was, of the RF bit signal was achieved to 25 decibel. We also, uh, monitors uh, uh, temporal behavior of the RF bit signal uh, to evaluate the effectiveness of injection rocking. With the injection rocking, the RF bit signal is quite stable. However, once the uh, uh, injection rocking was lost, the RF bit signals uh, largely fluctuated. In this way, the injection rocking is quite important to, uh, for the photonic terrace detection. Finally, we summarize the present talk using this slide. Thank you for your kind attentions.